Throughout history, Christians have been divided over doctrinal matters, debating and disputing over theological interpretations, denominational differences, and the finer points of the faith. While understanding theology is important, there comes a point when debates about doctrines no longer serve to edify the body of Christ, but rather lead to division, confusion, and contention. Scripture speaks clearly about the dangers of engaging in fruitless arguments and warns us about the destructive nature of debating over human doctrines. Um, the question then arises, what's the point of all this debating? Does it truly lead anyone closer to Christ? Or does it simply generate pride, confusion, bitterness within the body of believers? The Bible calls us to focus on Christ's doctrine, His teachings, His commands, and the way we live out His light in the world. The doctrines of man are man-made interpretations of Scripture that have often been a source of division. Debates over issues like free grace, Calvinism, Arminianism, sacraments, church governance, or denominational distinctions have caused endless disagreements. And while some might argue that these discussions help sharpen our understanding, in many cases they devolve into unnecessary strife. When we focus too much on the doctrines of man, we lose sight of the core message of Christ. His doctrine, the gospel, is simple yet profound. It is the truth that brings salvation and leads us to a life of love, grace, humility, and service. Christ's doctrine can be summed up in His two greatest commandments. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You can read more in Matthew 22, 37 to 39. In John 13, 34 to 35, Jesus tells us a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Jesus did not say that the world will know we are his disciples by our doctrinal debates or theological knowledge. He said the world would know us by our love for one another. Therefore, our focus should be on living out this love and reflecting Christ's light to the world, not on tearing each other down with endless arguments over doctrines that often amount to personal preferences or human traditions. The Bible explicitly warns against engaging in fruitless debates and arguments that lead to strife rather than spiritual growth. 2 Timothy 2, 23, 24 says, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. The scripture is clear. Arguments over foolish questions and disputes lead to strife, not to peace or understanding. Instead of engaging in such debates, we are called to be gentle, patient, and teachable, focusing on the love and truth of Christ. In Titus 3, 9, Paul writes, But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. This verse highlights that debating over trivial matters and contentions about the law or man-made doctrines is unprofitable and vain. It does not build up the body of Christ, but rather distracts us from our true purpose to live out the gospel and share the love of Christ. Jesus himself often avoided getting entangled in debates with religious leaders who sought to trap him in their questions. In Matthew 22:15 to 22, when the Pharisees tried to trap him with a question about paying taxes to Caesar, Jesus simply replied, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Jesus didn't get caught up in their trap. Instead, he focused on delivering truth and wisdom that transcended their petty disputes. Debating the existence of God with atheists is another example of where endless argumentation often bears little fruit. The truth is, you cannot argue someone into faith. Faith is a matter of the heart, 
and only the Holy Spirit can bring conviction. Yes, we are called to share the gospel and provide a reason for the hope that is within us, 1 Peter 3, 15. But we must remember that even the devils believe in the existence of God. Thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. James 2, 19. Therefore, merely winning an argument does not necessarily lead someone to true faith. Debating with atheists often leads to pride and self-righteousness rather than genuine spiritual fruit. Even if you win the debate, the question remains, does the atheist believe because of your intellectual prowess? Or have they been convicted by the Holy Spirit and transformed by the gospel? Winning arguments for the sake of winning is not the mission of the Christian. Instead, we are called to share the good news of Christ's love, salvation, and grace, allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work of conversion. One of the most dangerous outcomes of doctrinal debates is division within the body of Christ. Jesus prayed for the unity of believers in John 17, 21, saying, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus desired for his followers to be united not divided by unnecessary quarrels and debates, where we allow ourselves to be caught up in doctrinal debates, we undermine the unity that Christ prayed for. We give the enemy an opportunity to sow seeds of discord, leading to factions and divisions within the church. Galatians 5.15 warns, But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another, where we engage in needless arguments and quarrels, we risk tearing each other apart and ultimately weakening the body of Christ. As believers, we should be focused on building each other up, encouraging one another in the faith, and working together for the cause of the gospel. Instead of arguing over doctrines, we should be united in our love for Christ and our commitment to fulfilling the Great Commission. At the end of the day, what truly matters is how we live out the teachings of Christ. Jesus didn't call us to argue over theological nuances or denominational distinctions. He called us to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. He called us to be salt and light in the world, reflecting His love and truth to those around us. He debates over the doctrines of man often lead us away from these central teachings. Whether you identify as a free grace believer, a Calvinist, a Protestant, or an Anglican, what matters most is whether your life reflects the light of Christ. Are you living out the love, grace, and truth of the gospel? Are you making disciples, sharing the good news, and serving others in the name of Christ? In the end, doctrinal debates may satisfy intellectual curiosity but they do little to advance the kingdom of God. Instead of getting caught up in fruitless arguments, let us focus on what truly matters. Following Christ, loving others, and living out His truth in a world that desperately needs it. As the scripture says, let all things be done unto edifying 1 Corinthians 14, 26. Instead of debating over man-made doctrines, let us focus on edifying one another in love, grace, and truth, reflecting the light of Christ in all we do. God bless you and your loved ones. Beyond the doctrines of man, in endless circles, they debate with voices raised to legislate. The doctrines of man they hold so dear, yet lose the truth that's crystal clear. They speak of grace, of law, of faith, yet often love they hesitate. For Christ has shown a simpler way to love, to serve, to humbly pray. Why waste the time in bitter strife when Christ has called us all to life? Not words of war, nor doctrines dry.
a love that lifts, and faith that flies. For all their talk, for all their creed, do they reflect the Savior's need to reach the lost, to heal the blind, to leave the pride of man behind? For Christ's own prayer, his deep desire was unity with hearts of fire, that we, his people, one might be in love, in grace, in purity. So let them argue, let them fight, but I will walk within his light. For Christ alone is truth and way, not endless words, but love each day. So seek not quarrels, seek not fame, but lift up high the Savior's name. For in his love, his truth, his peace, all striving, all contention cease.